everyone, it's Miriam with a Y. This is part two of a two-part series where I answer my friend and YouTuber Sharon Lindley's video challenge to use the gorgeous luster pigments made for resin by Color Art to make a jellyfish scene. <laughs> oh my gosh. To let you know, we were sent the pigments to try, but our opinions are our own. It's just impossible not to love the pigments though. Anybody who gets these is going to just fall in love. They are just somewhat fabulous. It's the next day and my first layer has cured so I can work on it. Now remember, my piece is actually going to go this way, but because screens are horizontal more, I'm gonna work on it this way just so that you can see more of it as I'm working. Now I am gaga with this color scheme. These colors are so striking and vibrant. And I am really kind of nutty cuckoo about this sort of mysterious surprise cell-like thing that happened here. It looks as if I added silicone or resi blast, but I didn't. This was a fun reaction to my heat gun. I think it adds extra interest to the lines that were caused by the little silicone brush that I used, which ended up working out really well. If you remember, I was trying this out for the first time and it cleaned up pretty darn good. I left some here just to show you that it just, even with my nail, I can scrape off anything that's left over. And all I did was let the resin cure on it overnight and then kind of twist the fibers like this and all the resin came off. I left a couple little pieces inside here too for you to see, like there's a little speck over there. And with my nail, I can get it to pop back out. So it's super simple. What I would recommend is probably getting a couple, one that you leave for color pieces and then maybe one that always gets clear resin so that if there's any little bits of color, it doesn't contaminate perfectly clear resin. Now, the other thing I love is the spiced ginger. That's the name of this color that I used against the Azure Mist. I love the contrast between these two colors, but I don't love that my attempt at coral kind of bled more than I would have wanted. It's always a challenge to maintain clean definition in resin. It always wants to kind of spread out and bleed and move along with figuring out what jellyfish to make. Oh my goodness. I also need to solve this for myself. I have an idea that I'm hoping is going to look okay. I'm thinking of making a paint of sorts with the spiced ginger powder and use that to refine the edges. I'm going to paint over this layer because you can. I think it's something that people forget. You don't have to only do everything on a resin piece in resin. You can let a resin layer cure and use acrylic paint right on it, either with a paintbrush and paint or paint pens, paint markers, anything to add whatever interest you want. Let the paint dry completely and just pour resin right over it. So that's kind of what I think I want to attempt here is to make a sort of paint with the resin pigment and use that to refine my edges. So crossing my fingers that that's going to work. Okay, so here's the plan. This is the resin art pigment spice ginger and I want to make a paint with it and I don't want to mix it into an acrylic paint because any paint that I added to would just dull this and I want to maintain this rich color. So what I'm going to add it to is matte medium, which is for all intents and purposes like clear acrylic paint. It's a uh, matte medium, there's also gloss medium, it is just something that's used to 
sort of thin the intensity of an acrylic paint, you can use it for a decoupage also, or as a top coat if you want to take down the sheen of something. But in this case, I'm going to use it as the base for this powder. I'm crossing my fingers. So I have a little bit of it here. And now I'm going to take a little matte medium. Not too much, because I don't think I need that much. And see if I can mix this in. Uh, I do not think that's working. Ha! Huh. I think, or I'm concerned, that the extra sort of secret sauce that gets added to the mica powder here to make it easy to blend into resin makes it not water soluble. So it is not blending into the matte medium. I mean, it looks to you like it is, but if I look at it really closely, it's still pretty grainy. So yeah, that is not what I thought it would do. I was kind of hoping it would go in like a mica powder would. Huh, okay, time for a different solution. I suppose I could mix up a teeny tiny bit of resin and mix that in and then use that, but that's a really tiny little bit of resin that I need and I've mixed up small batches of resin, but I don't think I've ever gone down to that small an amount and felt that it would be a good cure. Um, plus that would mean I'd have to wait for that to cure before I could pour, so I'd have to wait a few hours and, um, hmm. Hey, okay, you know what? I have an idea. <laughs> well, if this doesn't work, I just, just won't tell you about it because it's probably stupid, but I'm thinking, yeah, well, let's see. Score! Yes! <sighs> okay, okay, so, this is 91% isopropyl alcohol. And I figured, okay, if this is not water soluble, maybe it's solvent soluble. And it did, it reacted to the alcohol. So, score! Okay, no, before I get excited, now I have to see if the matte medium will mix into that. Because this is not gonna stick. I doubt it. <laughs> I still need something to make a paint. So, I'm going to scoop up a little matte medium again and add that to this. And it's working. It's going in, woo! Okay, I have a paint made with this pigment. <gasps> Score! Yay, it's totally creamy. It should be paintable. Alrighty then, okay. Now that I have some sort of paint, let's make these look more the way I want. I really should work from here to here because I'm left-handed, so I don't mess myself up as I work. So I gotta go this way. So I wanted more rounded edges, not so pointy, first off. And I don't want to really paint over what's here because it has a pretty pattern and the color is beautiful. So I really just want to accentuate what's here. So what I'm also hoping is that this is going to give this maybe a 3D kind of look because this, what I'm painting on here, will be a little higher than that. Not by much, really, but it'll also have a different texture, so I'm hoping all of that ends up being interesting. In a good way. <laughs> Not in a, oh, isn't that interesting? <laughs> Not in that kind of way. So far, I'm really happy with how this is going. What's 
a little tricky for me is matte medium, as the name implies, dries matte. So even though it's got this sparkly pigment, it's still dulling the effect. So I'm having to constantly remind myself that once clear resin goes on top, it should bring back the sheen of this. Now this makes me happy. This looks more like a life form growing at the bottom of my little alien ocean. Now, now I've got to paint some jellyfish. Somebody please help me. Now, I think that both sea nettles, that's what these are, and moon jellyfish are really beautiful. So, I'm going to try to paint both. <laughs> go big or go home. <sighs> so, I, maybe a nettle here and a few moon jellies maybe here and maybe a couple here. Oh, hey, you know how a bunch <laughs> of lions is called a pride? And, uh, I don't know, a group of geese is called a gaggle and crows are called a murder of crows? Do you know what you call a group of jellyfish? A smack. Who comes up with this stuff? So I think I want to put a metal here and a smack of moons <laughs> over here. Now, if any of you is an oceanographer or a diver or some other, you know what's going on in the ocean kind of person, do not tell me if nettles and moons would never be in the same part of the ocean. I don't even want to know. This is my alien ocean, so my rules. I, I, in my ocean, those two type of jellyfish hang out together all the time and have lunch. And that's what's going to happen in this particular painting. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm going to work with a Posca paint pen to start just to give myself a little bit of an outline. And the reason I'm doing that is because Poscas at first are something you can wipe away. So I'm just making sort of little guidelines for myself. Because remember, Posca eventually, when it dries, it's permanent. But at first, it's, I guess, water soluble because I'm just using a wet paintbrush to remove lines that I don't need. I don't want to block this if I can avoid it because this is just so cool. So I kind of want to put them here. Then what really defines them are these clover-like patterns they have on their backs or crowns or, I don't know, <laughs> head. Maybe a couple of those small and off in the distance. And that'll be a tiny smack. <laughs> All right, I now am going to do the same thing that I did with this, but I'm going to use the Bling It powders that I am tasked to use by Sharon. Now, Bling It powders, unlike the resin art pigments that I used here, these can be mixed into resin or acrylic paint. So I will be able to mix this into my matte medium easily enough. The ones that we were sent are interference type colors. So like this is blue and though it looks white when I mix it in and start painting it, it'll look almost like blue glitter. Let's see how that works. As well, I have a little bit of the matte medium. I'm going to scoop a little bit of this and mix it into the medium. Because I do want to add a little bit of white acrylic paint, just a hint. I want to water that down a lot so that it doesn't end up just being that these guys are clear glittery blue. Just want this to be a little milky, a little translucent. 
So I'm painting all my strokes toward the center because these jellyfish have lines like that so that if my paint strokes show, it'll just look like the natural lines of the jellyfish. All right, I guess we'll see how that dries. This matte medium is white when it's, when it's wet and it dries clear. I'm better off painting thin layers to build up the translucency of the jellyfish rather than put down too opaque of a, a layer. And then while that dries, I'll put in some distant ones that are a little smaller, or less defined, hopefully. Now what I'm doing is just scraping some of the white outline off because I don't want it to look too cartoony. And I had put down another layer of the milky and I'm just going to scratch in some details. Now we have to give them very translucent tendrils. Their tendrils are hardly visible sometimes. And they're also not that long. I don't have very far to go. <laughs> I'm thinning these lines down now too. I'm going to minimize the lines as much as I can while still having some guide. And the reason I'm not afraid of scratching at my resin is the second I put a clear coat down, any scratches that are here now will be completely covered and they will disappear like they were never there. So for this guy, I want the body to have sort of a goldish quality to it and then it'll have purple highlights. <laughs> I'm so geeked about that. And so for this, I've mixed up some gold blingit with pretty much just matte medium. I haven't added any white to it yet. And I'll let this dry and give that a second coat. So what I did, since this brush has a rounded end, I let it define the little ruffled edge and then let the strokes create what I'm calling the ribs for me. While that's drying, I'm putting down the arms as opposed to the tentacles, which are the thin outer ones. I kind of want them to have more of a fuzzy look, kind of lacy. So, so I want almost a dry brush. And I'm just pouncing to get kind of a veily, lacy look pretty quickly without too much bother. Okay. Now I'm going to put in my second coat here because this one's dry. And then now adding some purple. And this is purple sapphire. 91% alcohol to dissolve it. <sighs> that is kind of lovely. And then I'm going to add a little bit of medium to it to make myself a paint. For my version of the sea nettle, I'm adding purple to the ruffled edge which as you'll see later will end up looking more pink when I layer more color on top of it. I'm also painting the tentacles with the purple sapphire. For these last layers on the bell of the jellyfish, the bigger part, <laughs> I added a touch of white to the gold blingit mix and I also threw in a couple of drops of a brownish alcohol ink, I forget which color, to give this particular jellyfish more of a color than the moon jellyfish. 
I think I'm pretty happy with the jellyfish. And I love this play here. It looks almost like some other kind of jellyfish. I ended up adding another branch of coral, <laughs> whatever we want to call this, because this corner looked a little empty. And I think that now I'm ready to add my resin layer. I'm just going to go with a clear coat, but I have an idea for a possible addition. So let's see if that works out. If you've been enjoying this painting, remember to subscribe and hit the bell and the thumbs up to let me know to make more videos like this. This year I'll be adding more and more exclusive in-depth videos and other extras for those of you who've chosen to back this channel by becoming patrons. All of that will be available only on Patreon.com, so not here on YouTube. Make sure to check out my Patreon page to find out what else patrons get. Links for everything I used for this entire project can be found at kit.com slash Miriam's Nature. There is a clickable link for that in this video's description box. On the kit page, you'll see a picture of everything I used so that you can easily find what you need as well as any coupon codes I might have. Click on any picture to be taken right where I found that product. And clicking on those links can often help my channel too. It's an awesome free way for you to help get videos made. <laughs> now, let's continue with the resin layer. And stay tuned at the end to see the cured piece and lots of close-ups. Now, for my last little detail, I've mixed up a little bit of the blue blingit in some resin and I'm using a little little baby pipette and I'm just, what I'm gonna do is just drop little sort of bubbles and then put a little crystal on top of each of those just want to get like a little field of bubbles these will be a little higher than the rest of the surface and I think I'll put a clear drop on top of each one okay so I'm just going to run a torch over this whole thing pop any <laughs> little bubbles that were not planned <laughs> put this to bed and then we will see what it looks like when it's all cured it is now done fully cured and I am in love. It is one of my favorite pieces to date. I'm a little proud of my first attempt at jellyfish. The alien coral makes me smile. I love how the bubbles turned out and these pigments and colors are divine. They bring this piece to life in ways I couldn't have guessed. They are hands down the best thing I've ever used to color resin, period. And I can't wait to make more things with them. Thank you, Leslie, for sending these. And more importantly, thank you for creating these pigments. Oh my word. Thank you, Sharon, for taking me out of my comfort zone <laughs> and getting me to make this piece. And thank you all for spending this time with me. Let your creative natures shine now. See you in a few days. Bye now.